What's up guys, Rab here from Rabtastic Paints. Now a couple of weeks ago, I posted a video showing how I made Durin's Doors slash Watch on the Water, a little diorama. I took it to a recent tournament, the Scouring of Stirlingshire, and I won third place, which was quite a shock to say the least. Now when I posted the video, I asked for ideas about what scene from Lord of the Rings I should do next. Someone suggested Dead Marshes, and that's what we're doing today. I started with some XPS foam board and I drew the rough pattern of where I wanted the land to be in this marsh because it's going to be mostly uh, manky water so a little bit of pathway and some little islands I can put some shrubbery and some trees on stenciled it out with a pen and then got to cutting it Now I recently bought a really really sharp craft knife and I thought it was going to be one of my favourite tools but I had to go back to the foam cutter, the, the wire cutter, it, is, it was 10 times better. I mean, just look at that. That is foam cutting pawn. This is a great tool that cost me less than a tenner on Amazon and it might be almost wrecked but the, the use that I've got out of it has been fantastic. I was saying during the week to a couple of guys that it's great having the proper tools for a job. It makes <laughs> even daft little projects like this so much easier. With the pathway and islands cut out, it was time to mount it onto a board. Um, these were just cheap uh, wooden craft board that I got from Amazon. I had to cut it square because they were rectangle, rectangular with circled edges which was not what I needed so I had to, to trim the sides off each of them um, then I mounted a plain square of XPS foam in the middle because I wanted the, the resin to be deep um, and then the islands were arranged on top to fit perfectly perfectly-ish and both of these layers of XPS foam were stuck together with toothpicks to hold them in place uh, and a bunch of hot glue. I wasn't really worried about the resin getting between the layers of foam, I was more worried about it getting outside of the foam, which definitely didn't happen either. Now said board needed a frame to stop that resin getting out and ruining my dining table so I used some of that spare um, craft board to make walls all around. Um, chopped them off and hot glued them to the sides to keep everything in place. Now I've said it before and I'll no doubt say it again, uh, the wooden boards like anything that I build or make are quite like every girl I've ever dated, not quite straight. So, in order to try and prevent any resin from leaking out, I used the glue gun to seal up the gaps. Once again, this is foreshadowing. I then used the very fun technique of scrunching up a ball of tin foil and using it to impart some texture on the foam board. You could use a rock if you had one, but um, Scotland or Glasgow in particular is currently under a bit of foot of snow, so I couldn't find any rocks on the walk with the dog, so uh, I rolled up a ball of tinfoil it was. Now remember when I talked about the right tool for the job and how it makes everything so much easier? Well my last couple of build projects, the Oskeliath board, uh, Balanced Tomb, and the watch in the water were all sort of hampered when I tried to when, when I got to the step of the black magic craft uh, black paint and mod podge PVA mix thing that you use to slap over XPS or other sorts of foam so it hardens and gives a, a nice platform to paint on every time I've done it I've used poster paint uh, which is very runny and water based so it's not worked at all um, it was only my good friend uh, J-Mac of J-Mac's Armies of Middle Earth told me stop using poster paint and use actual acrylic paint so I bought some from Amazon and uh, what do you know a hundred times better than before this this would have saved me so many headaches when I made that balance tomb board I swear I painted that like ten times 
after leaving it overnight to dry and then giving the whole board a quick spray of black spray paint including the wood on the outside I then took a, a very dark brown and started filling in uh, most of the area with the brown I wasn't too worried about leaving spots of black in the corners but I wanted it to have a good base coat of brown this was a living board after all After that I did another couple of coats with a lighter brown and then a dry brush of an even lighter brown paying close attention to the edges of the board, uh, the edges of the pathway as well as the actual path itself down the middle of the board. And now it's time to add the dead that give the dead marshes their name. These are some sculpts from The Painting Goes Ever On um, that I painted up to look like really old ancient elves, nice blue skin, some gold armour, some green cloaks uh, and then I held them in place using some UV resin. I was hoping that the UV resin might give them a little bit of a glow in the dark effect under all the resin. It didn't really work like that but I held them in place um, long enough for me to pour the actual resin on top of them anyway. So I did uh, about four of these um, in place of actual dead elves, which I don't have in stock, my friend. At this point I was looking at the board and I knew it needed something but I, I just couldn't figure out what and then a little voice in the back of my head spoke to me. A wee tuft. So I set about tufting everything in sight. Um, in hindsight I should have probably tufted under where the resin would be so that it looks like there's things under the water living I then attempted to sink some down but we'll get to that part of the video uh, later but yeah tufts everywhere to give the dead marshes a little bit of life this makes sense doll I then put down a small layer of basing glue from Geek Gaming Scenix and using some of their uh, basing range just laid down a little bit of a path down the middle of the marsh. And then it was the time that we were all waiting for, it was resin time. Uh, now whilst you watch me mix up a batch of resin, I just wanted to thank my Patreons uh, for helping support me and allowing me to buy all the ingredients to make silly, silly little things like this. You guys are legends and I cannot express quite how much I appreciate you. With the two part epoxy resin fully mixed together it was time to add a little bit of dye uh, to the water. Um, I started off with a few drops of blue and then a couple of drops of black just to give it a, a watery but dark look. Uh, I didn't want this to be clean looking, I was tempted to maybe put some green in but I think that that would have obscured uh, a lot of the details whereas blue and the black was actually alright. Um, I really need to try that green actually, see what that looks like. Maybe next time. With the ink mixed in, it was now time for the resin pour. And I'm going to let you watch that in silence.
Now, I don't know if almost two minute long resin pours are good for the YouTube algorithm or not, but it's what the people want. With the resin completely poured, it was again an overnight wait to see the results and yeah, as I've hinted to multiple times across this video, there was a little bit of leakage. Now when I got up the next morning, the board had leaked a little bit and was stuck to the plastic lid, uh, but I had a fix for that. And then I just made my way around the edges, peeling it off safely using my uh, big metal wallpaper scraper. In all honesty, it could have been a lot worse for um, a board and enclosure dam that I made myself. I just peeled the resin off, flung it in the bin, and it was good as new. Well, I thought it was good as new anyway. I'll let you guys decide. Now the resin leak did mean that one of the dead marsh specters is popping out of the water which kind of adds to the coming back to life vibe I feel. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, please hit like, please subscribe if you haven't already, please leave a comment, share the video with one of your friends, all that YouTube goodness. Now, before I say catch you next time, in honour of the JMAC cameo, here's a little outtake for you, and I'll catch you next time. A wee tuft is required, what would you want to say? I'm so hungover. Are we tuft?